Murine typhus, also known as endemic typhus, is a disease caused by the bacterium Rickettsia typhi. The history of its discovery and understanding is intertwined with the broader study of typhus fevers, which have been known for centuries, but the specific recognition and differentiation of murine typhus as a distinct entity occurred in the early 20th century. Historically, typhus fevers were often confused with other febrile illnesses like typhoid fever. It wasn't until the late 19th and early 20th centuries that scientists began to differentiate between various types of typhus. The discovery of rickettsia, the genus of bacteria that includes the causative agents of various forms of typhus, was a significant milestone. Howard T. Ricketts, an American pathologist, was instrumental in this research. In 1909, he identified and described the organism that causes Rocky Mountain spotted fever, another disease caused by a rickettsia species. His work laid the foundation for understanding these types of bacterial diseases. The specific identification of rickettsia typhi as the cause of murine typhus came later. In 1931, Maxi demonstrated that the rat flea, Xenocilla chepis, could transmit rickettsia typhi, and this was a key discovery in understanding the epidemiology of murine typhus. This disease is primarily associated with rat fleas and is often found in environments where humans live in close proximity to rat populations. The differentiation of murine typhus from epidemic typhus, which is caused by rickettsia prowazikii and typically transmitted by human body lice, was crucial. While both diseases share similar symptoms, including fever, headache, and rash, their epidemiologies and vectors are different, which has significant implications for prevention and control strategies. In summary, while the concept of typhus has been known for centuries, the specific identification and understanding of murine typhus as a distinct disease caused by rickettsia typhi emerged in the early 20th century, with key discoveries occurring in the 1930s. Murine typhus, caused by the bacterium rickettsia typhi, is transmitted to humans primarily through the bites of infected fleas. The typical route of infection involves several steps. The primary reservoirs for rickettsia typhi are rodents, particularly rats. The bacteria live in the bloodstream of these animals without causing significant illness. Fleas become infected with rickettsia typhi by biting an infected rodent. Once a flea is infected, it remains so for its lifespan. The most common way for humans to contract murine typhus is through the bite of an infected flea. When the flea bites a human, it can defecate at the same time. The feces of the flea contain the bacteria. The bacteria enter the human body typically through the site of the flea bite. Scratching the bite area can facilitate the entry of the bacteria. The bacteria can also enter through mucous membranes. For example, if someone rubs their eyes after touching an infected flea or its feces. Once inside the human body, the bacteria infect the endothelial cells of the vascular system and multiply, leading to the symptoms of the disease. Common symptoms include fever, headache, rash, and muscle pain. It's important to note that murine typhus is not typically transmitted from person to person. The cycle of infection generally involves rodents and fleas, with humans being incidental hosts. This means that humans are not necessary for the maintenance of the bacterial life cycle, but can become accidentally infected in areas where interaction with infected rodents and fleas is common. Prevention of murine typhus focuses on controlling rodent populations and avoiding flea bites, especially in areas where the disease is known to occur. Murine typhus, caused by the bacterium Rickettsia typhi, is a flea-borne infectious disease. Its symptoms are often similar to those of many other viral and bacterial infections, which can sometimes make it challenging to diagnose without specific tests. The symptoms typically develop within one to two weeks after exposure to an infected flea and can include One of the most common symptoms is a sudden and high fever, often accompanied by chills. Severe headaches are frequently reported by those suffering from murine typhus. Body aches, including muscle and joint pain, are common. Gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea and vomiting may occur. Some people may develop a cough. Approximately four to seven days after the fever starts, many patients develop a rash. This rash typically starts on the trunk and spreads to the limbs, but it may not involve the palms and soles. The rash can be difficult to see, especially in patients with darker skin. 
A general feeling of weakness or tiredness is often reported. Some individuals may experience stomach pain. It's important to note that the severity of these symptoms can vary. Some people may experience mild symptoms, while others may have a more severe form of the disease. In rare cases, murine typhus can cause complications. Treating murine typhus effectively hinges on early diagnosis and the prompt initiation of antibiotic therapy. The primary mode of treatment for this infection, caused by the bacterium Rickettsia typhi, is a course of antibiotics. Doxycycline stands as the antibiotic of choice for both adults and children and is typically administered for about 7 to 14 days. It's known for its efficacy and ability to quickly alleviate symptoms. For pregnant women, azithromycin may be used as an alternative, given that doxycycline is not recommended during pregnancy. Alongside antibiotic treatment, supportive care plays a crucial role in the recovery process. This involves ensuring adequate rest, which is vital for the body to heal. Staying well hydrated is equally important, especially if symptoms like fever, vomiting, or diarrhea are present. Managing fever is another key aspect of supportive care. Over-the-counter fever reducers and pain relievers, such as acetaminophen or ibuprofen, can be used to manage fever and alleviate body aches. However, these should be used as directed and under the guidance of a healthcare provider particularly when it comes to dosages for children. Monitoring and follow-up are essential components of the treatment process. Patients should be observed for signs of improvement and any indications of complications. If symptoms worsen or new symptoms develop, further medical evaluation may be necessary. It's important to avoid self-medication, especially with antibiotics, without a proper diagnosis and prescription from a healthcare provider. The misuse of antibiotics can lead to resistance and other health complications. While undergoing treatment for murine typhus, steps should also be taken to prevent further flea bites and potential reinfection. This include